Hello Fiber friends! I've finished another big project and I'm so excited to show you! Ta-da! Here it is! My very first crochet cardigan and it is 100% hand spun yarn. Oh, I'm so excited that I got this one finished and I want to tell you all about it. So if you're new here, hello, welcome. I'm Evie, this is the Jillian Eve channel and I love spinning. So I love to spin yarn, show you how I do that and make stuff from hand spun yarn like what we are talking about today, which is this beautiful crochet cardigan <laughs> that I spun. So, this has been a project that has been in the works for a long time. And if you haven't followed me for a long time, that's okay. Also, probably, if you have, you forgot because it's been so long, so I'm gonna just catch us all up. My original plan for this project was to create a three-ply yarn, and I wanted to uh, do like a cabled knit cardigan, sweater, something. I was looking for cables. So here's where this project started. This is 100% Targi, and I purchased this fiber from Created by LCB. I fell in love with this colorway, which is Fairy Garden. And I love the purples, the teals, the blues. Obviously, these are my colors. <laughs> so here I am. I'm here for it. So that's always important to find a braid of color that's going to work with your wardrobe, right? Because sometimes, I've done this too, I've fallen in love with braids of fiber because I just, the colors are just so amazing and striking. But then I think, am I actually gonna wear that? So this one I know for sure, this is not risky for me. This is my comfort zone of color. This is my Ashford Elizabeth. She's a little bit Franken wheel. She has a traditional drive wheel on her. Um, she's, she's been through some things, but she's a survivor. And so I have her on the large whorl pulley right here, which is about seven and a half. So every time this goes around for one treadle, it's turning my flyer seven and a half times. And that's helping me control my twist. When I have it on the smaller whorl size, it's putting too much twist in my yarn because I'm getting more turns per treadle, which is more twist. So this is the right pulley for me. One of the things to be aware of is how the color repeats in the fiber braid. And if you look here, we've got some darker blue, some purples, and then it kind of goes into this brownish, sort of a pinkish brown. So when we have color, that does the repeats. This creates a self-stripe, right? And if we do a large chunk of self-stripe, like spinning the top from one side to the other, the more material you have of that color, the longer it gets stretched out, the thicker your stripes are going to be in your final worked up piece of knitting or crochet or whatever it might be. If you split the braid, which is tearing it into pieces, which many people do just kind of automatically to not have to deal with so much fiber in your hand at once. If you split it, then your color repeats become shorter because there's not as much color in the fiber to spread out over a distance. Each of these braids is four ounces of Targi. And as I lined them up, I noticed that I have four that are the same one way and four that are the same the other way. I actually had five, so I took the oddball to use as my sampler. So here we go. This one, and then these two. There and there. So you can see how these were dyed and how they were pulled off. They do repeat across the middle. If you fold them over, the colors repeat with each other. And that's the same here as well. The colors repeat with each other. So I have four with the brown in the middle and four with the peach in the middle. I think that by spinning this way, I will spin 
two strands from this and ply it with one strand of this and then two strands of this and ply it with one strand of this. So there are some areas where the tones might come together a little more similarly and there are some areas where it might be very different but just because the colors all work so well together overall it's going to be beautiful. I pulled just a little off the end and did a little chain ply and that is what I did to test and see how it compares and it looks like the twist angle is just about the same even though the cascade is a four ply and my yarn is a three ply they are uh, the same diameter so that's what I was looking at and now that I figured out I need about 27 wraps per inch in my singles so that when they are applied with three bobbins together in a three ply it's going to give me a rough equivalent to cascade why didn't this turn into a cabled knit cardigan i'll tell you why i had a grist problem and i do have a video giving even more details about my grist problem if you want to check that out in more detail but basically what happened was my yarn wasn't completely consistent from one skein to another the diameter of the yarns are the same but this one has more fibers in that diameter and this one has less fibers in that diameter. So as it gets bent and pulled up and worked into stitches, there's less material in one than there is in the other. And while it doesn't seem as drastic in the yarn itself, it definitely is noticeable in the fabric. So what can I do about it at this point? Well, nothing i needed to change my project there just was no way around it it wasn't going to look how i wanted it to look in that cabled cardigan what i had started with was beautiful but i knew that if i continued it was going to drastically change and i wasn't sure that it would fit in the end because when your gauge changes that much it can change the measurements of whatever you're making and i didn't want to end up with something that fit weird so these are the perils of working with hand spun yarn, but I think these challenges also make it a really exciting thing to work with hand spun yarn because we get to think about what we are creating on, on so many levels from the fiber to the spin to the number of plies to the way that we treat the color. You know, there's just so much going on that we get to pay attention to and maybe control or maybe let happen but it's so much fun, it's a journey. I decided that I was going to crochet. I thought, hmm, I will start with something simple and easy. I had never crocheted a full garment before this project. I have crocheted before. I was taught to crochet, I don't know, I was probably six when I first picked up a crochet hook. And I did probably what most six-year-olds who learn how to crochet do, which is make incredibly long chains. <laughs> Just chain, chain, chain. <laughs> right? Am I alone? I, I'm sure I'm not alone. Um, but I didn't get much farther than that until I started weaving and I wanted to have some borders and trims and finishes on some of the shawls that I made. And so I started I figured out how to crochet enough to do borders, but not really enough to read stitches to follow a pattern. And that was a goal I had. I wanted to learn how to crochet and follow a pattern. So I can do that now. <laughs> yes, success. <laughs> it's a lot of half double crochet. It's a lot of half double crochet. Um, and that's that was fine that gave me the practice that i needed this is from for the frills and it's an easy crochet pocket cardigan and there it was and i thought aha i'll use that one so i can say as a beginning following the pattern crocheter that this is a good one i enjoyed it it was it was easy to follow there were video tutorials through the whole thing that talked me through anything i was unsure about and that's always fantastic. That's why you're here, right? Because you want me to talk, talk through things <laughs> that we're all unsure about. 
I found it a really great pattern to start with and I also found this pattern to be very forgiving of my gauge inconsistencies. So if you are a beginner spinner and you're looking for a project to use up some of your hand spun yarn, I would recommend this one. It does have a good range of sizes. It doesn't go fully to the top. 63 is kind of... We're saying that's the gold standard, um, 63 inch uh, bus circumference. I don't think it goes quite that high, um, but I do feel that it would be an easy pattern to make adjustments and uh, be able to get a fit even on either range of sizes. So, uh, but if you if you have done this pattern or if you've thought about this pattern or have this pattern, I'd love to know how it turned out for you. I have it all finished except for whether or not I am going to add the optional neck uh, edging and it will go up the side around the back of the neck and then down the other side. It will match the finish that is at the bottom of the sleeves and the bottom of these panels here. So the question is, <laughs> The question is what yarn am I going to use to do that? Now I had originally planned for this to be a knit sweater. Crochet uses more yarn than knitting so I don't have a whole ton of yarn left but it is enough to do that piece to come up and around. But I'm looking at the colors that I have left and this marled yarn here is going to give more of this kind of feel, except it'll be coming up the side and down. I feel like it having it turned the other way is going to look a little TV staticky. Like, that's just a lot going on. So I thought, what if I just trim it in one solid color? And that'll kind of give a vertical stripe of color down the center, which could look cool. Um, so I went digging to see if I had any yarn for that, and I do actually have this purple, and I think this might be a nice complement to the yarn colors that are already there, and it'll kind of give it, it'll finish it off nicely. I think it'll work. And if it doesn't, it'll be real easy to rip it off and use up the last bit of that. So I'm going to go ahead with this yarn. This was voted on during a patron chat. And so thanks patrons for helping me make this decision. I guess we're all about to find out how it goes. We're back. The cardigan is finished. And here is the edging that I put on with that purple yarn that I had. I think it's perfect. It's not too busy. It sort of just frames all of this going on without having even more sort of static kind of distraction. And I won yarn chicken. It was close, but I won. <laughs> this was all I had left from that little skein. Um, so this is just a double crochet on a like a alternating front post, back post, front post, back post, and then the opposite the other way. And I think it looks pretty cool. So it's time to try it on and have a big reveal. I definitely think this was the right choice. Thank you patrons for your assistance. Um, but I really like having this border. It just kind of finishes it off and the color doesn't compete. It doesn't feel snowy um, with all of the speckly bits happening in different directions. I, I feel like it really kind of polished it off. What do you think? Is this a good polished effect? I think it is. I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> the puffy sleeves. <laughs> um, puffed sleeves. The puffiest. And it's just in time because the weather is just starting to cool off outside. Yay! Sweater weather! <laughs> Who's with me? Because I am going to wear the heck out of this cardigan. It's so comfortable and I love it. So, <laughs> I have more projects coming up for Socktober. So you won't want to miss any of these fun things going on. Please hit that like button, subscribe, 
and I'll see you in the next one. Happy spinning! <sighs> Aha! If I burn my lipstick, it's officially a Jillian Eve video.